What's going on guys? Danny from Slow Restoration in the shop today. We have a 2020 High Country Silverado with the Duramax 3 liter. So the baby Dur Duramax. Um, so we're doing a lift kit on this truck. And here's the paperwork. So it's the Rough Country. Uh, there's the part number. I believe that's part number. 2019 four-wheel drive 1500 three and a half inch lift kit so as always let's get a measurement where it sits right now on the front right through the center of the wheel sitting here we are 37 and a quarter in the back right through the center of the wheel we are 37 and three quarters so about a half inch front to back off so the, again, this is a 2020, it has 22,000 miles, so shouldn't have any wear issues. Uh, the front tires are a little low on the outside here, and that's what kind of prompted this lift kit right now, because if he's got to buy tires, he's going to buy the bigger ones that go with this lift kit. We just went ahead and removed all four wheels, just kind of get them out of the way, off, out of the way, and we're going to tackle the front first. So the directions tell you to do quite a bit um long story short this kit includes a spacer for the top of the strut that goes on as you can see up here there's three studs you can see two of them right here there's a third one in the back there there is this wire loom you have to pop off so you can get the uh, nut off the stud um obviously two bolts down here on the bottom of the strut there and we are changing the complete upper control arm so upper control arm needs to come off and this whole strut assembly coil over shock whatever you want to call it needs to come out of the vehicle um, so they tell you to do a lot in the directions including unplugging the rack and pinion the differential including unhooking all these sensors and stuff like that i don't think you need to go to that extreme and this is the pieces that are going to go in so we have two uh, it's a split collar spacer that interlocks and that goes underneath the spring so you will need a spring compressor and this is the spacer that goes on top of that shred assembly you can see you have the three bolt pattern for those studs to stick through um, and we will have to do some trimming too the bottom of this strut is two 15 millimeter bolts that are going to pop out and that is now loose. 10 millimeter here at the uh, bracket for the, the sensor wires. We can set that down on the side. 18 millimeter nut here at the ball joint and we can gently pop that out. And then allow this to gently swing over. Like I said, don't pull any of that tight. Be careful with your steering linkage. Um, I think I'm actually gonna get a bungee and bungee that back a little bit these upper mount bolts are 18 millimeter and again there are three i know you can only see two there see if i can get you up in there up oh, the shadow there are three up there go ahead and back them out and be careful when you're removing the last one because this is loose now with those bolts out you can see we dropped down pretty good there still sitting on the lower a arm um, we did go ahead and pull these two 10 millimeter headed bolts out of our sway bar i think i'm going to go ahead and go to the other side disconnect that too and that'll allow us a little bit more droop here to get this out um, but i think it will come out so that worked good we got the other side out and just allow the sway bar to swing down out of the way we do have to put drop down brackets here for the sway bar anyway so that needed to come disconnected anyway um, so now we should be able to grab this strut and gently persuade it out of there uh, with the the three studs out we can actually rotate it now and come right down through and then i can pull it back towards me and pull that right out and just like that our strut assembly is out and sitting on the ground and ready to be compressed and that spacer put under the bottom so this is what we have now the only thing left we have to do right here is actually take this upper control arm off and there's i believe they're 21 millimeter 
bolts up in here. With these two bolts removed, your A-arm will come off. With that off, here's our old one. Here's our new one. You can see it's a little beefier, a little thicker, and it does have a grease fitting in it, which is always nice. We went ahead and slid our new A-arm on there, and remember your bolts go from the inside of this shock tower here. So front one goes forward, back one goes back. And with that in there, we're actually going to go ahead and torque these both these bolts down to 80 foot pounds. And we're just gonna, we made a mark on here where this thing sat up and down. Um, it's not torqued down yet, that's why it moves so free, but we're gonna kind of line it up with that mark and go ahead and torque them down and we'll be ready to tackle that. All right, so we have the spring compressed here and I have my spacer in. It's a little tricky, you have to interlock them and put them under this isolator and then let the spring compress the spring compressor release a little bit and it pushes these two halves together. So it's pretty much a preload uh, for more tension on the spring. And that by far is gonna be the scariest part for most people. Probably gonna have to take this to the shop. Uh, they have actually safer spring compressors than this shrut compressors. So um, this one worked, we got it done, but you're probably gonna need help on that part. With that done and the Tension relieved off that. We're going to go put our attention to these spacers. As you can see, I have one of the studs installed, but pretty much they give you six studs, six nuts with a washer on it, and one jam nut that's a half inch. It slips over that stud after you wiggle the stud through here. Once that's through there, slip the jam nut over, start your your nut and you're just going to tighten it down and each one of these studs has a knurl in it and it pulls it into the hole. Important to note there is a large hole and a small hole. So this side obviously that fits right through and spins. This side it's going to go through and actually catch. So pretty self-explanatory but don't get too worried if you put put the stud in there and it just flops around. Just use the other side. That's what it looks like when it's done. Studs pulled through into the neurals. We're good with that. Now we need to actually trim off some of the stud that sticks out of the top of that shroud assembly because as you can see, and by the way, these only go on one way, but as you can see, if we do that, it's not gonna sit flush. So we need to trim some of this off and you're measuring 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the stud down and just taking your cutoff wheel or whatever you have to cut and cut that off. That'll allow room in there to get that assembly together. With those installed, we're gonna put the spacer on top of the strut, use the factory mounting hardware, and go ahead and tighten all that up. Uh, three of them, 45 foot-pounds, and um, you, kind of, you kind of have to keep the spacer up, start the nut, and tighten them all down at the same time because as you can see, there's not much room there. But with that installed, we're ready to go back in with this. With that slid in, uh, you kind of take it and slip it down through this hole here, the bottom part, with it spun, and then kind of pick it back up, and it actually goes back in pretty easy. We have the, uh, let me get my light on, there we go. So we have the new flange nuts at the top started. Uh, nothing's tight yet, everything's loose here. And they want you to pull these factory clips off the bottom of the strut and use a nut and bolt that they supply to put this back together. So with their upper A-arm in, uh, the spacer installed, this little spring tension spacer at the bottom, we're ready to start going back together. There we got everything reassembled. So the bottom bolts, go ahead and tighten them up, tighten your top bolts up. Tighten your ball joint once you get that reconnected. And then don't forget to put your clip up here. Bolt that bracket back on that holds all your wires. And then of course here, we're not gonna hook the sway bar up yet, but this is the drop down bracket for the sway bar. I'm gonna leave it off because I still have to do the other side and it'll make it a little easier. But this goes on with the open end 
towards the inside and you reuse the factory mounting hardware on this they do supply new hardware to go uh, from your old bracket to the new drop down bracket so on this side uh, you do have this plastic piece that's got a bunch of stuff strapped to it it is in the way of getting these top strut bolts off um, there is a bolt I know there's one here. I haven't got back here to see if there's one here that attaches to the frame. I think there is one in the front and the back, and then you should be able to gently pry up on that and gain access to those bolts. But other than that, it's going to be mirror image to the other side. We got the front all put back together, wheels back on. <clears throat> this is how the sway bar drop brackets look after they're reattached. Just go back over and make sure everything's tight. Everything's clipped back into place where it should be and we're ready for the back. All right, first step on the back should be a little easier. It's just pretty much putting blocks in between the axle and the leaf springs and replacing the U-bolts. And actually we're putting new shocks on the back also. Kit came with new shocks. So um, we have a pole jack supported underneath. I'm getting ready to remove the shock completely from the vehicle. It's 21 millimeter nut and bolt at the bottom and just a 21 millimeter bolt. There is a welded nut at the top. There is a bracket right here. There's a bolt here, a bolt here, and one up front. They're 13 millimeters. It holds all this wiring and brake lines to the axle. Um, no need to unhook that stuff. We're just going to take these three bolts out and allow that to release up a little bit when we drop this axle down so we don't pull anything tight. And now again with the axle supported with the pole jack here, we're going to take a 21 millimeter and go ahead and zip these U-bolts off. A lot of dirt coming. Settles down in there, so watch your eyes. If those loosened up, we're going to go ahead and remove our U-bolts. And there is a... Uh, little cradle that goes at the bottom of the axle watch as you're taking the last one off because that may fall down on you and now we have to install this block so you can kind of see it's wedge shaped so the bigger end will go towards the back there's a hole in the top for a pin in the spring and there's a pin sticking down that locates in the axle housing so now we can just slowly lower our axle just so we get enough room, make sure nothing's pulling tight. It shouldn't. And then once we get enough room, again, the bigger end goes towards the back. We need a little bit more, but we'll just go ahead and slip that in. You can see the pin in the spring and the hole in the axle tube. Once we have enough room there, we'll just slip this in and that will drop right down there. And then as we jack this up, We'll just make sure the pin lines up the hole in the block on the spring. Once we get that all lined up, we can take our new U-bolts here and drop them down into place. There is a kind of a locator up top, as you can see. Uh, once we get them in place, then we can grab that cradle, slip it back up, and start our new hardware on there. That's what it looks like when you roughly have it together. I have them snugged up a little bit, but not tight yet. I prefer to leave them loose till I get the other side in and then we'll come back and actually torque the U-bolts. Now for our new shock, we'll leave the sticker off of it for now until we get it installed. And um, yeah, go ahead and get that put up on there. They do come banded down so they're not all the way out and unband them and then just run them through their cycle in and out a couple of times to get that gas equalized. There we have our bolts, bolts, blocks, and shocks done on both sides. Now we just tighten everything up. The U-bolts actually get torqued down to 90 foot-pounds and uh, we'll go ahead and torque the shocks down the factory spec. I'll have to actually look that up, but, um, and then we can clean our shock, put our sticker on and That'll be it. As far as this lift kit, we'll go ahead and put the three bolts back in that bracket. Make sure everything clears good. And uh, we'll get this thing sitting down on the ground and take our measurements. All right, we're down on the ground. Here's our new ride height. Definitely set, set up quite a bit. Sits up fairly good amount. Let's see if we actually got what we're at, what Rough Country 
advertises. I'm gonna actually back the truck up. Um, lift arms are actually out, but the front will settle as we roll it. So I'm gonna back it up, pull it back forward about where it is, and then we'll get an accurate measurement here. All right, so get our new measurement here right through the center of the wheel. And I'm going to call that, uh, we'll do 40 and 5 eighths. And that's up from 37 and a quarter, I believe. In the back here, we are close to that, just a tiny bit lower, like 40 and a half. So about an eighth inch different front to back, but I guarantee that front is gonna settle a little bit and it may even change just with the front end alignment. I gotta be honest, it definitely looks better. It sits level now anyway, so it, it's a leveling slash lift kit, but uh, it levels it pretty nicely. So you can look inside here. Before you really didn't have much gap there, so now you can see right inside there, see that nice new shiny A-arm, and uh, yeah, he still has to get his wheels and tires. I think he's gonna run a 285 on this. Um, the kit actually says it's designed for a 295 max, so 285 will be a nice fit. So there you guys go. Rough Country Lift Kit 2020 High Country Silverado with the three liter Duramax. They all should be pretty much the same though. I think the 1500 chassis are all real close. So thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.